intended to with this. Um, you know, as far as the planes go, um, I think uh, really it's just important to think like a sculptor and to sort of think like, a, I guess, like a 3D rendering engine, you know? That's really helped me out. If, if you guys haven't seen the, uh, uh, I thought somehow that I was, um, that it was a bad thing that I was noticing the, the similarities as I was learning about 3D, but uh, it seems like a lot of guys have caught on to this, and uh, I see it all over. If you check out uh, Gurney's Journey, the blog, um, it's got some fantastic tutorials on there about, um, essentially about that, about how light works, about how color works, and um, all kinds of light phenomena, and uh, all about palettes. It's just a great blog to keep up on. Uh, for this kind of stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, thinking like a rendering engine and thinking like uh, a sculptor is probably uh, the fastest way to get to uh, dropping the crutch of, of always having to have reference. Because, you know, if, if, you're, if you want to uh, you know, draw something that doesn't exist, it's, it's kind of tough. You, you end up having to sculpt stuff or, you know, model it on the computer and render it or something like that, or your invention just doesn't work out. So you're not, your, uh, your vocabulary is stunted of what you can express yourself with. So, uh, you know, you want to put something fantastical in your piece, but you just can't because you're, uh, you have to have reference, you know. I think I'm no longer a believer in your stuff is only as good as your reference. Um, I lived by that for a long time. I just didn't understand, you know, how limiting it was until I saw guys painting without. And it just shocked me. Having said that, you know, I still collect reference of all kinds, you know, if I'm doing anything serious, even if I'm not looking at it as I'm painting, the, you know, the subject matter alone, I don't know anything about, you know, antique furniture, so I'm sure not going to make that up. <laughs> if I'm, uh, if I'm designing a creature and, uh, it's, you know, I want to get some sort of believable surface on it, I'm definitely going to be looking at animal and insect and bird surfaces for it first, even if you put it in a drawer before you start painting. So also, um, you know, understanding the principles of how light works on a surface, um, that's super important, how, you know, turning shadows are softer than cast shadows and that kind of thing, how, uh, how specular and diffuse components work. And this stuff is easy to find out there nowadays, but, you know, most of us learn from observation. And, uh, and just painting, so. got to get in that uh, actual time, uh, you know, with the brush or with the Wacom. It can't be all in your head. Spend some time in the dirt. Still, I'm, I'm turning that shadow, uh, or the, those details, we're getting 
were fighting the surface and I wanted that chin to turn under so I had to soften that up. And you can see with this light source how you know the planes at the top are brighter than the planes at the bottom. And depending on how sharp that surface change is of those planes determines how gradual that fall off is. And that's in like the big shape of that, you know, large sort of rounded cube of a chin there. Uh, and then it's in all the small shapes that are in the ripply little, uh, whatever that is, fat deposits in the chin and muscle. And uh, little muscle attachment points all bulging, you know, when you scrunch your chin up. So you got to think in those uh, big to small. You can skip the details, but you can't skip the big forms. It's hard to look at it now, you know, after I'm done, because now I see all the things that I've left out. Looking at it way too long now. <laughs> all the things that I didn't address. And also, uh, one of the other things is take it easy on the highlights. Again, now I'm, I'm more uh, designing harder edges in here than, than putting stuff in that will actually uh, contribute to modeling the form. Uh, this is more of the designer part of, you know, rather than uh, the realizing the form, realizing the surface, this is just make, it's going for appeal. Every brush stroke you go down should be designed. Every brush stroke that goes down should be intentional, designed, the direction of it, how it's interacting with the shapes around it. And that's just, you know, it, that builds as you, as you uh, start to decide what you like, paintings you see, or ideas you have, or Paintings you're doing, things that work and things that don't work. You start to develop a language, uh, you know, of mark making. And it becomes faster and faster and you have to think less about it. too soft there. This is the point where like I can decide like how much I want to bulge certain parts out just by how much light it starts to catch. How sharp do I want one plane meeting another plane just by, you know, cutting into an edge or softening it out. It sort of dramatically changes his personality and the style of the piece. <coughs> you can see how muddied up I got the, the palette as well. It's uh, I totally lost like 90% of temperature control as I started painting. I 
I think that's it. Feel free to keep emailing questions. Try to get to it sometime.